This is Samsung's new S95D, which might actually be the best or worst TV depending on who you are. Not only is this incredibly feature rich, but it does carry an insane level of brightness, one of the best gaming experiences available, as well as one of the best images you can get on an OLED TV right now. There's also one new feature on this TV that might very well be a deal breaker. Now, as someone who's been a PC gamer for the longest while, I'm a bit too much of a sweat lord when it comes down to PC gaming, so for me, melting into my couch after a long ass day is quite actually one of the best experiences. Something about a couch and a controller relaxes me as opposed to a mouse and keyboard. With that though, playing games on this TV has legitimately been unreal. With those HDMI 2.1 ports, the latest gen consoles are going to have both variable refresh rate and auto low latency mode support, so stomping these little kids in Call of Duty has never felt better. VRR does allow these recent consoles to unlock frame rates from the standard 30, 60, or 120 hertz to anywhere between 48 and 120 hertz, giving you that incredibly smooth gameplay experience. ALLM does also give you that super low response time, so if you do need to play certain games like FPSs, everything here is near instant in game. Since both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are rocking an AMD chipset as well, this TV is going to have AMD FreeSync Pro support. So there's quite literally zero graphical tearing, skip frames, or any sort of issues when it comes down to gameplay. And while this TV can go up to 4K at 144Hz if you have the right hardware, my PlayStation 5 at 4K120 still looks badass. And while there are different picture profiles depending on the game you're playing, I decided to go with the enhanced HDR, which just looks great out of box. If you really do suck at FPS games like myself, just use a built-in crosshair and up your black levels, I promise it does help. Other than that, I really just dig the gaming menus which showcases your current frame rate and other gaming information and from an actual image quality standpoint it's hard not to love this tv considering again this is an oled display i will touch on content and media shortly but for me i'm more of a gamer than somebody who watches content so this is what really excites me most about this tv with a potential peak brightness of over 1700 nits this is literally the brightest display i've ever used and one of the things i actually have to do once in a while is actually turn down the brightness for once with that the hdr capability on here is unreal since oled panels can turn off individual pixels to give you literal blacks while maintaining punchy colors. Diving into just about any game on here looks incredible. For me, I've recently started back into working my way through Ghost of Tsushima, which has one of the best art styles and HDR scenes when it comes down to gaming. And when it comes down to the image, I don't care if it's true 4K, upscaled, downscaled, whatever scaled, games on here simply look awesome. When it comes down to my FPS games, my go-to is always Overwatch and Call of Duty, which really take full advantage of VRR and ALLM. Regardless of what you're playing though, the 4K and HDR experience here is noticeably badass, and it's hard to find something to complain about. What's not hard to notice is the new map coding Samsung decided to put on this TV this year. For a lot of OLED enthusiasts, it's easy to say this is probably one of the most dividing features an OLED display can have, whether it's a glossy or a matte finish. And sure, while it does come down to preference, I can say the matte finish on here truly is one of the best I've ever seen when it does come down to anti-reflective coatings. In my space, I do have this big ass window and some patio doors, which simply bleed light in during the daytime, so this coating really does make a difference for my viewing experience. In some ways, somehow, this TV does maintain an incredible image throughout, and I'm hoping to see this sort of technology when it comes down to the gaming monitors in the future. Even the viewing angles remain solid. If you do have a light controlled area, you probably still want to go with a glossy finish if it is available, but either way, this matte finish does hold up incredibly well. From a media standpoint too, I'm really not seeing any compromises apart from the lack of Dolby Vision support, which I know a lot of people like to have. This does still have support for HDR10 and 10 Plus, as well as HLG Media. Similar to the gaming side as well, there are some profile presets depending on what you prefer to watch. Throwing on some sort of animated movie really showcases the range this display has when it comes to HDR, and it's easy to appreciate. Again, coming back to how bright this display is alongside the OLED panel, it makes it an awesome media experience. For myself, I've recently taken up studying cinematography to improve my YouTube videos, and I've jumped into a lot of different content from Hollywood movies to indie creators, as well as other YouTubers and new and old anime. And I can imagine other TVs might provide a similar experience, but for myself, this has still been the best that I've tried so far. For this TV though, unlike most other sets, you do have this box separate from the display, which is technically the TV itself. This is the One Connect box, which acts as the brain for the entire setup and drives just about everything. From a port standpoint, you are just about covered for everything you might need with four HDMI 2.1 ports, one of which is eARC, the One Connect port which does go to the TV itself, a port for an antenna, an optical port for a sound system, as well as an Ethernet port for your internet connection. There is also two USB-A ports as well as one Type-C. For myself specifically, I'm using my Apple TV 4K as well as my PlayStation 5. I'm also personally in the market for a soundbar setup, so if you do have any sort of suggestions, please leave them down below. I actually really do want to hear them. Until then though, I really can say the speakers on here are excellent, and if you've seen the trend with this TV, I haven't really had much to complain about just yet. The speakers sound full and they actually get plenty loud and I haven't even had to go beyond 30% volume as of yet. This is a 70 watt setup and while I mentioned I'm in the market for a good soundbar setup, I'm easily covered by the built-in set till then. There are some sound settings to choose from as well if you do want to use some of the AI features, as well as the ability to set your own custom EQ which is always a great feature to have. This TV does also have Dolby Atmos support and you do have the ability to use this 70 watt setup as a center speaker if you are setting this up in a surround sound setup. For me, while gaming, the sound is loud, full and it really does sound 
sound great. Even just playing music on Apple Music or Spotify in the living room is a good time and I really can't complain. Not that a YouTube video will really do this much justice, but here is a quick sound test. Yeah, as impressive as the sound is, so is the actual build and design of this TV. In my setup, I've got the 65 inch version, which fits nearly perfectly in my setup. And this does also come in a 55 and 75 inch size. While this can be flush mounted to the wall, I've gone ahead and used the included stand that came in the box. While this is the heaviest stand I've ever put together, it's surprising to see how wobbly the TV still is. Not that this would really be an issue for anybody, but just something to keep in mind. The bezels on this TV are nearly edge to edge as well. So overall, this is an incredibly premium built product. It also doesn't hurt that the entire TV is housed inside this one connect box like I mentioned before which does help keep this TV super thin. This box can be routed elsewhere as well or mounted on the back end of the stand. There's also two one connect cables included in the box, one short one for the rear mounting and a longer one for whenever the box is set up elsewhere. Driving that one connect box is Samsung's Tizen OS which is surprisingly good. I won't pretend like I won't still be using my PlayStation 5 or Apple TV but for an out of the box solution the Tizen OS is really good. It's super snappy and has just about everything you need. Like other TVs though there will be loads of suggested content on the homepage with all the tiles for your apps. This obviously has the popular apps you might want like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, and Prime. And not that I'll personally use it, there is an entire gaming session here which is dedicated to cloud gaming. I can see this being great for people who might want to game casually with cloud gaming or if you're not much of a gamer and just want to test out the waters. Another feature here that I really dig is the ambient mode since it kind of makes this a super large Samsung frame TV considering you do have that matte finish. And of course since this is an OLED display you might be worried about burning. This does have built-in prevention built right in with both pixel shift and pixel scrumming which you can do whenever you want or whenever the TV is turned off. In the box, apart from the stand TV and cables, there is the included remote. Honestly, it's just tiny and minimal just how I like my remotes, and it has all the shortcuts I need like Disney and Netflix. Noticeably missing though is there is no swap for any sorts of input, which is a bit of a bummer, but you can always choose that through the TV itself. Still, charging the remote does come easy with the solar panel on the back end, or you can always charge it through USB Type-C. And while this TV is near perfect for me, I'm sort of hard pressed to find something to complain about personally. Still, this TV is not perfect, and I think some of the things missing here might be the lack of a glossy option, which is typical when it does come down to OLED panels. Some people really don't like that matte finish and that might just very well be a deal breaker. Apart from that, while I don't particularly nitpick about Dolby Vision myself, there are a lot of people who prefer that, so another reason to skip this release if that's something you want. Apart from that, I really can't complain about anything on this TV for me personally and it's easily going to be my new main TV going forward. For me, the game experience and the brightness are heaps above anything else I've ever tried and as somebody who really appreciates couch and console gaming, I'm not sure anything else will really be much better than this. Still, this will definitely be an amazing option for anybody who's into media and cinema and I'm looking forward to watching more movies on here myself but let me know what you guys think down below and again if you could leave me your sound system recommendations i'd love to hear them i appreciate you watching till the end till next time